Uh, I'm actually starting to like completely not trust any of your self-reported pain <laughs> scales because <laughs> we're learning you work through a little bit yeah. too much pain. Yeah. Can we whisper? And Lauren not here, she can hear everything. But I, I, I'm, st I'm starting to wonder if this, she's just such a good athlete with a high pain tolerance that she almost has like two grade one. All right, we're here at Champion Physical Therapy Performance in Waltham, Massachusetts. And we are here to see Mike Reinold, who was a World Series Champion Physical Therapist. Lauren is feeling a little bit banged up. I mean, you've seen her go through lots of different hits with her flag football training and her games. I do feel like the hits haven't been bothering me as much as maybe they would have in the past, but I have been really experiencing some like hamstring posture hip Overuse, stuff, tendonitis, probably, something along those lines. <laughs> hopefully for those of you at home, you can see what a really good physical therapy session looks like, how it's handled, how the PT talks. You know, worst case scenario would be immediately go get an MRI, immediately shut down all activity, but we're hopeful that there's some productive things that we can do. For sure, so that's all of our guesses, but we'll Let's see, see what, what happens. happens. Okay. Tell, tell me what happened. So I don't know how much you know about the fact that I've been like upping my football I, training. I did know that, Okay, yeah. so I've been doing like full practice, full sprints two times a week, okay. games on the weekend both days. Okay. And so what I started noticing a couple months ago was just like a lot of stiffness when I was trying to like forward bend or hinge. Like okay. it was like a lot of tightness in my hamstrings okay. and both my sides. hips. Both sides. Okay. Um, and now it's gotten to the point where like I, and I, I've always had like pretty flexible right. hamstrings. So I've always yeah. been able to like brace my legs. I like can't right. touch my toes. Whoa. I Even I know you can touch your toes. Yeah. Everybody that follows you online knows you can touch your toes. I, right? But when I'm standing, so yeah, I can like fake it. Yeah. And, but when I'm standing trying to touch my toes, it's almost impossible. To Interesting. Do. Okay. Um, and it really hurts right behind. Like it's really just like the hamstring hip like connection. You, and, and, connection. And, and there's not one more than the other. They're no, both. Really, bad. the left okay. is like if anything, the left is like slightly more. Okay. When did your workload increase? How long ago? Like six months. And prior to that, maybe this, nine. I would say nine months. Actually. And you were handling your workloads fine prior. Totally to Totally fine. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. other than just workloads going up and just life, nothing significantly changed. Okay. No. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So so it's just that over a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And I would say, I mean, that's a good workload. Right. You know, and you're training how many times a week? So I'm strength training three times a week. Yeah. Sprint slash like football training two times a week, okay. and then games on the weekends. Tell me about your sprint training. What do you do those days? I mean, mainly it's just running routes. Yeah. So it's mainly it's not like I'm going out to the track and doing sprints, yep. but I am doing a lot of changing direction. Yep. Like full speed. Do you route running. get to max intense sprints in? in your training, not in the games. Yeah. Okay, good, because uh, you need to do that. Yeah. Okay, um, and then do you count those? Are you counting, you count sets and reps in the gym. Okay, so you're not you're not counting not sprint. At all. <laughs> so your sprint is the probably the hardest hamstring exercise For you've sure. done all day. Now it's affecting like my daily life. Like before yeah. at the beginning it was just like after a sprint practice I would be or after a practice I would be a little sore right. and I would like and you get over it. Foam roll stretch and it would get over it. Now it it's fine. like every day, like when I wake up like to stand up, it's just like everything feels stiff. Sitting and sitting for a long period of time, like yeah. it just starts to hurt. Yeah. This is this is old age, Lauren. I know. I'm, just I'm like, I'm just <laughs> This is I'm how really, I feel. So every that's morning. what I keep telling Jason. I'm like, I'm just too old for this and no. he's like trying to convince me that uh, I'm not. I hate to break it down as simple as saying everything's an equation of workload and capacity. When we see people oftentimes they come in here with the problem it's usually two things. They, ha they have poor capacity and high workloads. Yeah. We could argue with you you probably have really good capacity and just a high workload. Yeah. I'd rather be you because then we just mitigate the workload a little bit and you'll be in a better spot. So I am trying to make the U.S. national team so right. that's like my goal right now so yep. I, I do need to still train. I think what I really want to talk to you about is yep. like how do I keep training right and yeah, make sure that I'm still like yeah. managing everything appropriately we talk about this all the time right the stereotype of physical therapy is you go see a physical therapist and they tell you that you like stop or exactly. don't do that yeah. go or rest or whatever yeah. or something like that the whole concept of performance therapy we always say this when we teach like the students and stuff is like you hired me to help you continue doing what you love right the first thing you, like we should never say is okay well we need to stop running we need to stop playing football no we just have to we have to figure out this equation yeah. all right let's take a peek at a few things okay. we ready to go let's yeah. stand up I want to look at a, the way a few things move but I think we're gonna be very specific to just just like touching your toes and squats and those types of things let's go feet together and let me see you go down and touch your toes yeah perfect yeah and now you made that challenging right come back up <laughs> Like you rocked your knees back into Rico Vardam and like did them as like as tight as you can. Give yeah. me, give me just like a toe touch, like just nice with a hip hinge. 
and without like you don't have to but lock that's your. A, it's like because it hurt. Like if I yeah. want to do it, just like you feel without it hurting, more. I have to just like bend my knees first, and then I can like maybe straighten. And then out. you can go up. But that's, to that's just go back with my legs straight, it like you can tell. I just like it just hurts. And and if we had to say three three quadrants, we have attachment up into the hip bone, yeah. mid or by the knee. It's attachment. It's all up, all, all at the top yeah. on both yeah. sides. On both sides. Okay, good. And and when you go do that and you feel that kind of <laughs> together. Right. Yeah, it's the exact, exact same on both. I, I mean, I'm just going to, again, we're going to compliment you. I'm just going to show you me just so you feel better. Okay. Is that good? <laughs> Did you feel better? Is that for real? Yeah, that's 100% real. But I guess I'm used to being able to, like, I could, I could. That was, that was 100% real. <laughs> no, She's no, like, I'm, I'm, you should but see somebody. But your tan looks nice, too. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, but mine's real. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm used to being able to, like, Easily plant my hands on the ground know, without bending yeah. my knees. So I think That's for me, deal. it feels tight. That's a bit, no, it, yeah. it is tight. So, yeah. you know, one thing I've actually learned quite a bit. So, Dave Tilly, one of our physical therapists who's not here right now, um, his primary population is gymnasts. Which I used to be. Right. Yeah. And, I, and they all say that they feel super tight. And then we can take their hamstrings and put like their knee to their face. Yeah. And they say, like, oh man, see how tight that is? <laughs> and they still say they feel tight. So, there is something about the way like your nerves sense stretch right so being tight and actually being limited in range of motion are two different things yeah so you're the type of person that often because you're super loose and you're super uh, flexible when you feel tight you probably do things to increase the mobility you do things to neuromodulate mm -hmm. tone like foam rolling self myofascials vibration massage like yeah. those types of things and what you probably do is you desensitize them more to allow more range of motion and I mean, sometimes that's not good mm -hmm. so we're just gonna look at that good and just tell me if anything feels weird okay good that's fine right yeah. good perfect here what do we feel here? Just tightness here. And then how about if we do it from here? Better or worse or the same? Uh, worse. Worse, like you just don't like, I mean, I don't want to just like label things, label things, but I mean, you might have a bit of, this might be like early hamstring. Same? Yeah, this one's worse. Similar, and you feel it worse on this side. Yeah. How's yeah. that feel? That's not good. Okay, flip on your stomach. So there's a million things we can look at, but my job is not to nitpick minutia, right? Mm -hmm. I Sure, is your big toe tight? Maybe. We're gonna stick to like the, the low hanging fruit. Yeah. So just relax, I'm gonna look at hip range of motion just in here. So I'm just gonna stabilize low back. Good, that looks pretty good to me. Oh, someone is a little tight somewhere. My quads are really tight. Your quads tight. are very tight. Yeah. And then did you see your hip flexor hike up off the table? I'll do it on that side. For, oh, okay, mm. way better. Yeah, That's whenever it. I do couch stretch, this right on side, that side is geez, always you like see that? Really, Look at, yeah. Watch your hip come up a little bit there too. You can see it, how that kind of came up a little bit. So I, I'm having a hard time getting it up there. So it's interesting, so hip flexor is a little bit. Man, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds here, Lauren, but flip on your back. Like, <laughs> So let, let's see what we got with like hamstring here. Have we gone over this one yet? I'll be kind of curious. Let's see if we can see a difference. And then Jason, I might move you a little bit. No, oh, that so, one hurts. All right, so just, it, it hurts a little bit. You are picking a lot of exercises that may be picking the scab at what you're doing, right? Yeah. You're bringing your hamstring to a full length in position yeah. and trying to do an exercise on top of that. Yeah. When maybe like right now, that should just be sprints. Yeah, and we should be doing that's, other stuff. That's interesting. You know? That's what I was trying to think about. It was like, do I consider sprints strength? strengthening yes. my hamstrings like I know I, I know yes. it is but it's like so different from like doing a deadlift that I was like right. is it do I keep doing deadlifts on top of sprints or do I just replace my like gym right. hamstring work with right. sprinting yeah. right now right uh, and so I think that's what we're going to talk about yeah that's yes. what I really want to know because yeah. I, I feel like that's where I was like second guessing I kept second guessing myself and yes. then I was like uh, I don't know what to do am I making myself weaker or too yep. yeah we, we hear this all the time with every athlete in every sport so yeah. it's the same but. yeah so a couple of things here so mid mid belly this is fine this is not a problem like you nope. don't feel discomfort in this spot. Yep. As I get closer to MT, like muscle tendon junction, do you feel that? Um, just a little bit. And then if I get a little bit higher, I'm kind of going off the side. Is that sore at all? No. That's not, okay, good. So the, the only reason why I ask, when you have a hamstring strain, we want to make sure that you don't have like a, any avulsion okay. kind of coming off yep. from the attachment point because that's a little bit more real. Can we whisper? And Lauren not here. She can hear everything, but I, I, I'm st I'm starting to wonder if this. She's just such a good athlete with a high pain tolerance that she almost has like two grade one sh hamstring strains that she's just like working through, yeah. right? It's not just like stiffness because like she flips on her back, like oh that hurts, you know what I mean? Like she actually says that hurts. You're not supposed to hurt with a stretch. 
yeah. right? You know that. You can, you're I'm, you, I'm you, not you, listening. <laughs> I actually wasn't. <laughs> she was, she was good. She was like, I, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you didn't listen. All right, I good. Wanna, I was like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. We're, we're, we're going to come back then. Okay. All right, so hamstring again. This part's fine. Yep. Okay, and then muscle tendon junction, fine. Yep. And then attachment. A little, yeah, that's where it is a little sore. Not as much, it doesn't feel like there's much on this side. On, uh, that, on that side. Yeah. Okay, so she's definitely up in attachment muscle tendon. Now, I felt the tendon. So, again, I, 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 we're talking worst case scenario here, but you're here. I yeah. don't think this happened, but we want to make sure you didn't, like, you don't have like a bit of an avulsion or a pull from the attachment site into your hip. Because yeah. those are bad and those don't heal that well. Yeah. So, it doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, great. If in the future, when I'm not around you, if you feel like you have an acute pull and it feels like it's all the way up in the top, like, let me know because yeah. we have to talk about that. Like, yeah. if that happens, you should go see a doctor, get an MRI, that type of thing, if yeah. it's that. So she's kind of muscle tenderness with the hamstring. Flip on your back. One thing that I know Mike is doing really well is making sure, like he had me block my ears before because he doesn't want me to be like afraid of any sort of diagnosis or start to like second guess myself. I know that that's how a good PT works is that they don't want to like fear monger. They don't want to make you worried about your injury, anything like that. Personally, I'm, I am aware that there's something going on, so I'm not too overly concerned and I'm not gonna like all of a sudden freak out if he says like, you have a pulled hamstring, I'm just gonna be like, okay, let's move on. Like, how do we deal with this? No. We talked for like 10 seconds and then we were talking about what Jason was gonna get you for Christmas. <laughs> it, it is it our anniversary weird. today, weird. actually. Today? Today's your anniversary? Yeah. Happy anniversary. Thank you. What a great anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna just do like a uh, slump test. So I want you to slump down, really bad posture, head down, all the way down, good. And then straighten this knee out for me here. Good, and then how's that feel down your leg? I definitely feel stuff going down here. Okay, and yeah. then same on the side. Better or worse or the same? Good, same thing, head down more. Good, how's that? Uh, it's the same. Okay, good, then same side to side. It doesn't feel different side And it's side. not, again, it's not like neurological zingy, like pins and needles. I don't think so, no. Yeah, because, No, it yeah. just feels like there's yeah. like something happening there, but it's not a, Got it. hold on. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna do this until it goes numb. <laughs> no, it's not numbness or tingling. It's okay. just, it just feels like a little bit of tension or something. I think we're at a point where we can start coming up with a plan. Okay. If I had to label this and, you know, again, I'd be careful with like a label of sort of things. I do think like I would probably still just call this like a grade one hamstring. Okay. And I, and I would say that one side is worse than the other side. Yeah. But um, that's very common and mm -hmm. very normal with what you did. Most people get this way from underuse and then a quick spike in an overuse yeah and that's the pull the pain on the ground that sort of thing that's right. a big deal i think yours is the opposite i think yours is like a chronic micro strain yeah. that you've been building up for months yeah so i think there's two buckets we need to work on workload management and then what can we do for exercises most people sprint too little and you, you're sprinting too much for sure i yeah. think that's why you're chronically tight and sore yeah. versus somebody that has a huge strain i think what you've done is your chronic workload's too high going back to your goal, right? The goal is not to slow you down. Mm -hmm. There is a point where there's too much workload right. and it actually starts to, to, to impact your output. Yeah. And that's, a, that's what you're dealing with a little bit here. So sometimes taking one step back to take two steps forward is what you need. Yeah. And that might be part of it. So mm -hmm. that's one. And then the other thing is I think we can build some more resilience in your hamstrings. Yeah. You could argue you're not doing enough specific eccentric hamstring work yeah. to be able to handle those sprints. Mm -hmm. I think you need to deload right now. Yeah. And that's funny because we just talked about the begin all this my job's not to keep you away from what you're doing yeah that doesn't mean you can't sprint but I think we just need to deload your work a, a touch right now yeah you can do routes at lower lows watch a, like a Patriots camp day they're not running max effort sprints every yeah. day. You can't, you can't you can't do that yeah. but they're still working on routes they're still working on catching the ball because that matters yeah. but they're just going slower exercise progressions yeah. and stuff we do that so we need Nordics and we need eccentric lowerings and at this point I'd probably just say a couple times a week so before you do some strength uh, sprints for example like we like to do like you know gliders divers like there's, there's a bunch of exercises in the hamstring literature we do so I'm gonna show you a few basic okay. ones they're so simple and basic it's crazy both legs down let's get one up and like a hamstring hold it right here for me and I want you to almost do like your floss and like oh, okay. in and out yeah. 10 times, right? So we're gonna do that. Yeah. So just like reach my so, arms yep, forward? Just like, just like that. Just like you guys taught me back in the day. <laughs> Good, perfect, and then come on back. All right, number one. Okay, what are we gonna do different? Okay, we're gonna start off with some massage gun, some vibration massage gun, some foam rolling to your hamstrings. We're gonna do your exercises to get them going. We're gonna do your RDLs, we're gonna get those going. We're gonna add in some eccentric hamstring components to your program to build your capacity for that tolerance. Does that yeah. make sense? So some Nordics, some RDLs, some unilateral bridge lowerings, like you get that stuff. I promise you this. 
if you go into March at 80% Lauren, you're not gonna have a great tryout. Yeah. If you if you feel 80% of you, that's not gonna be your best. Yeah. So at some point in time, you have to say that your biggest objective for your tryout is to be at 100%. And then should I stretch? Oh, yeah, that's great. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> so you, I don't want you to stretch. I want you to do soft tissue work yeah. and not stretch. You're hypermobile. Yeah. So you need to neuromodulate tone better. Okay. In my mind, okay. you don't need to stretch more. My age is a factor. It's it, it's harder to recover. Yeah. So it takes a little longer to recover. Yeah. But that's why you then you invested in yeah. techniques to help facilitate right. that. Right. Love it. Right. That's a good one. Yeah. But uh, as, at yeah. the same time, I think with my own men mentality around it, I was like. I'm getting older, I have to work harder right. than people who are younger than me. Right. But I have to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Figured yeah. it out. Is that a wrap on the episode? Is that, <laughs> it's a wrap. Was, was that not perfect? <laughs> uh, that's exactly right. Yeah. It's so helpful. It's a wrap. Thank you. Amazing. You're awesome. You're the best. Jake, love it. See you guys. I feel great. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so we just wrapped up our session with Mike. That was super, super helpful. It was kind of what I expected. I think it was best case scenario, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we were hoping that it wasn't like injury that's gonna set me back for like, multiple weeks. Go and get an to, MRI immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it really just is a matter of workload and managing workload. And one thing that really stood out to me was that he mentioned that we never count, or we always count our reps and our sets in the gym, but I don't ever count my sets and reps on the field. And I never think about how many sprints I'm running, how many routes I'm running. I just do it until I'm either tired or it's time to go home. So. I think that just having a clear plan going forward, having a lot of clarity on what might be going on, um, I'm really excited to see what happens and we'll keep you updated. Maybe we'll do like a 2.0 yeah, video. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. All right.